So you should already know that there's conductors and there are insulators. And you should know that the difference is that in a conductor, such as a metal, you have a material with free delocalized electrons. So this is electrons that aren't bound to a single atom, so they're free to flow through the material. And that's what this animation is showing. So here you can see the little blue electrons bouncing around at random, uh, and they're free to flow through the material. And you've got the fixed atomic cores that you can see here in purple. Now we've got no uh, current flow at the moment because the electrons are just moving at random, right? So so they've got some thermal energy, they're moving around, uh, but there's no net flow because I've not applied a voltage across this material. What I'm going to do now is apply an electric field. We know that electrons are negatively charged, so if you can see here this arrow, I'm making the left side of the material negative and the right side of the material positive, and of course Electrons are negatively charged and light charges repel, so the electrons move away from the negative side towards the positive side. And as I increase the electric field, the electrons move faster and faster and you have a net flow. So this is our flow of current. And that's exactly how metallic conductors conduct electricity. So why are semiconductors and how are semiconductors different to this? To explain, I'll take elemental silicon as an example because it's the most commonly used semiconducting material. So here you can see a photo of elemental or pure silicon and you can see that it's shiny and it looks like a metal, but actually its properties are very different. So silicon, we've got our symbol SI. Uh, and it has 14 electrons. So let's have a look at what that uh, looks like. So you can see here in our model of the atom, you have your nucleus at the center and you have your 14 electrons orbiting the nucleus. And you've got two in the first shell, then eight, and then four in the outer shell. So these four outer electrons are known as the valence electrons. And this is known as a, the valence shell if you, if you look at it in terms of its energy bands. And you should hopefully also know that this is only partially filled, so it's not completely full. And that means that if you uh, make a material out of an array of a huge number of silicon atoms, pure silicon, then they're going to covalently bond with each other. So uh, they've got partially filled outer shells, so they will share outer electrons with each other in the, uh, the silicon lattice. So the structure of the material would look something like this, obviously just taking a, a small portion of our, of our silicon material. And for the sake of clarity, we're not looking at the, the lower electron bands because it's only the outer electrons that take part in this covalent bonding process. So we can simplify our diagram by only showing these outer electrons and how they're shared across this, uh, across this silicon lattice, this pure silicon lattice. So they're the outer electrons drawn in there, and you can see that they are all involved in covalent bonding. And this means that unlike a metallic conductor that you just saw, in this case there are no free delocalized electrons to conduct current across the crystal. So even if I were to apply a voltage difference or a potential difference across the, across the material, so uh, I've got my battery or my power supply, I make one side positive, one side negative, because all of those electrons are involved in bonding, there's nothing free to transfer charge across the material, so no current will flow. But this is where semiconductors get really interesting, right? Because actually, if I add energy to the system, and I can do that in terms of heat, or I could even do that in terms of adding light to the system, I'm going to come back to that later. But if you add energy to the system, then some of these electrons will get enough energy that they will break free from those bonds and they will essentially enter the material, right? So they won't be associated with a, a single silicon atom or a, a, a silicon nucleus anymore, but they will become free and delocalized in the same way that you have uh, free electrons in a, a metal. Once you add enough energy to this system, you will f basically liberate these electrons. So it's a thermal emission of these electrons into the material. And now that these ones are not involved in the bonding process, if I was to add 
a potential difference, so positive and negative uh, sides to the material, you will get current flow because the electrons obviously are negative, so they will be repelled from the negative side and, uh, and, and towards the positive side of the material. So this is how you get current flow in a semiconductor. And this is cool, right? Because essentially it means, okay, if I, is it, this is a very oversimplified, but if I put a, a semiconductor into a circuit and it's low temperature, then in this case, you can see my bulb would be off. And if I heated, this isn't how we heat, we don't, we don't put it under a Bunsen burner, but uh, you get the idea. So if I warm my semiconductor up, then it will start to conduct electricity. And the higher the temperature, the more of these electrons you will be able to thermally emit into, into this conduction state. 